Why, hello there ladies and gents, and I've got a couple of videos for you today. Um, the first is my review of last night's premiere episode of the new season of Doctor Who. If you forgive the stuffiness of my voice, I've had a cold for the last few days, so um, it's not my usual timber. But um, last night's episode was a highly enjoyable opener for the new Doctor, Peter Capaldi, and this um, will contain spoilers. So you might want to not watch this video if you haven't seen the episode yet. Okay, I'm very excited for the new season now. I already really like Peter Capaldi. If you don't know, this dude, Matt Smith, of course, regenerated into this dude, Peter Capaldi. This isn't his final costume. This postcard, which is the set of 12 Doctor postcards, they hadn't officially announced his costume yet. So they haven't decided what he looked like yet. But he's got a nice outfit. It looks kind of like um, John Pertwee's, the third Doctor. Okay, so Clara and the Twelfth Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, re newly regenerated, land in 19th century London, where a Tyrannosaurus Rex is tyrannizing the place. Um, the, the, the TARDIS spits out of the Tyrannosaurus's mouth. And Doctor and Clara run again into the Paternoster Gang. Um, Madame Vastra, who's a Silurian, a lizard, um, Madame Jenny, and Strax, um, the, the Sontaran, who's always a lot of fun. And these characters have featured in the show many times before, during the Matt Smith era, and it's interesting to see them cross over into the Capaldi era, because um, I thought they were kind of removing all traces of the prior incarnation of the show. It felt like they were going for a fresh beginning. Like, even the incidental music is completely different. There's no, not a trace of the I Am The Doctor theme. You know, there's no trace of that at all. It's like a leitmotif just for the Matt Smith era. And the title design, the title sequence is completely new. Um, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it yet. It's got lots of ticking clocks and gears and a strange new quirky arrangement of the theme tune, which harkens back to the old 60s and 70s serials a bit, I think. And um, Capaldi as well harkens a bit back to the older Doctors. He reminded me a little bit of Tom Baker, actually. The way he's kind of more, more callous and dismissive of humans, in this hilarious kind of sardonic way. And um, I've already got a bit of a handle on what his Doctor's going to be. Darker, more cynical, more darkly humorous. And I think I'm going to really like this new incarnation of the show. So here in the Paternoster gang, um, Clara is disappointed by the new appearance of the Doctor. So the age factor does play into the story. And um, she's disappointed he's not this young, kind of youthful, handsome-looking guy anymore. So, um, and so so a lot of the fan base i think the episode itself was written to kind of try and appease the fans and ease them into this new era of doctor who with each new actor comes like a new era for the show the matt smith era was completely different to the david tennant era completely different vibe different feel about it and i think this will be different again completely different um and madam vaster is quite disappointed that um clara is so you know, hung up on appearances. And there's a really nice speech from her in that scene. And um, th there's a new enemy. Um, there's this kind of race that are of cyborgs that are trying to make themselves into humans by harvesting human body parts. So it's kind of Frankensteinish in this 19th century way, uh, hence the appropriate setting. Like They've got this restaurant set up as a front, and they're just taking humans and taking their body parts. There's this um, guy who says he's got the gift of good eyesight, and this android says, I accept. And the guy says, what? Your gift. And he takes his eyeball. It's quite funny. And, um, yeah, and the robots are kind of related to the clockwork robots from season two, all the way back in series two, from the Girl in the Fireplace episode. The SS Madame de Pompadour, the 51st century ship. This ship is the SS Marie Antoinette, so it's a sister ship of that. I was quite surprised to see a callback that far in the show, so many years ago. That was a great episode, by the way, though, The Girl on the Fireplace. And um, um, the enemies um, don't breathe. Like, their thing is they don't have breath. 
So Clara has to go through this corridor not breathing. She has to hold her breath. Hence the episode Deep Breath, the title. And it's a nice, clever little gimmick. Like, we've had um, creatures that you can't stay in the shadows, the Vastinarada, who turned out the lights. And we've had the, th the things, the Weeping Angels, where you can't um, blink, blink and you're dead. So, in this case, it's more a case of don't breathe, breathe and you're dead. And it's a nice little twist on it. And it was a really tense scene, the scene where she's walking through the corridor, trying to hold her breath. And um, the end of the episode features a surprise cameo, which I was astonished by. It had a cameo from Matt Smith, the previous doctor. And before he regenerated, he sends a telephone call to Clara, and she picks it up in the TARDIS, and he tells her to accept his new form, like whatever he looks like when he changes. He wants her to help him and help him adjust to being the Doctor. And that scene was definitely a ploy to fans, like to tell the Matt Smith fans, look, it's time to move on. You've got to accept Peter Capaldi and help him ease into the role of the Doctor. So it was kind of like one of those meta scenes. And it's almost like outside of the show. So it's basically Matt Smith saying, take care of Peter Capaldi for me and make sure he does a good job. And I liked that scene. It was a nice little scene. Unexpected. I didn't expect him to show up. I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about where it's going to go. And I'll be watching. And I'll be reviewing. I hope you enjoy the episode too. This is Adam Morton signing out. I'll have some more Doctor Who for you shortly.